Hi, um, I'm Chris Bartley. I'm the Managing Director of one of Europe's largest medical education, creative and PR agencies. And what that role means 90% of the time is sitting in meetings, listening to people talk, seeing people present, seeing people communicate on calls. And so I see what a difference it makes in terms of how effective you are at communicating your message, the difference that makes to you as an individual, and the difference that makes to, um, to companies. So what I thought I'd do is, uh, is start by saying, you know, if you're sitting there thinking, well, actually, you know, I don't present. My role doesn't involve presenting. I think that's totally wrong, because the best person to present anything is the person who understands the data, the person who came up with the idea, the person who really knows what's happening with the project. Now, that's almost never the most senior person. That's not the account person. That's, that's us. That's everyone who works in agencies. So we should all be thinking about presenting, and we are all the right person to present the thing we know most about. So you know, how can we put a bit of, a bit of structure? How can we create a bit of support for people who are not necessarily stand up from the front and present types of people? So, I'm going to look at four things that have nothing to do with the content, but everything to do with how effective you are when you present. So starting with how you can create a nice, relaxed, engaged atmosphere at the start. Then how you can make an introduction that is really relevant to what you are going to present and what you are going to talk about. How you set yourself up as being credible from the start. Then how you can use your audience's context. You know, everyone is most interested in themselves, so how can you utilize that to make your talk as compelling as possible. And finally, how you can avoid um, doing anything crazy or weird and distracting people from what you're doing and how you're delivering your message and your story. So starting with creating a relaxed tone. You might think that the first thing you do is introduce yourself, but actually often it's not. You know, we've all been to those meetings where you turn up, you meet the person on reception, you go into the room and there's six, seven people there and some of them are face down and they're typing away busily, some are talking amongst themselves. And actually that's quite a cold environment. Now you can go in and you can sit in the corner and you can get ready for your bit of the, the presentation or your bit of the meeting, but that can put a lot of pressure on you when you start because often you'll find that people are still head down in their computer by the time you're meant to be saying something. So if you've got the opportunity, go and say hi, smile, shake them by the hand. If there's a chance, ask them a question because that just interrupts the flow of what they're doing. It's something nice and easy and complimentary like, you know, these are fantastic offices, you must get some great comments on that. Or, oh, it's lovely to meet you in person. You know, I thought the, the comment you made in email was really insightful. Uh, have you got any other thoughts on that topic? It's not about relaxing you, it's about relaxing them. It's about creating that little bit of connection so that when the the projector fails immediately as you start, you get a laugh, not a groan it can really make a big difference to how, how effective you are. Then when it comes to actually stand up and give your introduction, you, you've got to avoid the classic agency introduction. Yeah, hi, I'm Chris Bartley, I'm the managing director, I've been with the agency 12 years. S says nothing, there's nothing of relevance there. And what makes it worse is the next person will say, hi, I'm James, I'm the account exec and I've been here three weeks. This is a terrible, terrible way to start any meeting it doesn't create engagement. What's most likely to happen is people are going to be thinking to themselves, OK, this could be another long meeting. These people value time served over anything, anything more interesting. I'm going to go back to typing on my computer. So what should you do? Well, you need to think about what it is that you're going to be talking about, what you're going to be saying later in the meeting. So if, say, I'm going to talk about digital later, I might say, you know, hi, I'm Chris Bartley. I've just finished working on this uh, multi-channel campaign with people with diabetes in Germany, we managed to reach 10%. That's a million people. And what's even better is that we saw a measurable change in behavior so that they now go and engage with their doctors, they talk about their highs and lows, and it's really been fantastic. Now, what's good about that introduction is totally different from the first one. One, it shows that I've done what I'm going to talk about at least once before. So I'm building my credibility before I start. Two, Hopefully, if there's breaks or there's something else, it gives something for people to talk to me about that they might be interested in that's relevant, again, to what I'm doing. So you can see how the way you introduce yourself really sets you up to succeed. It's quite important. And actually, the, the same thing goes if you are introducing a colleague. So you know, let's say I'm introducing my colleague, Denise. Denise has run multiple media campaigns recently, and actually one of them got a 15-minute spotlight feature on Sky News. And she's really fantastic. 
that sets her up as credible. She's going to talk about media later. The client's already thinking, oh, this is great. How do I get 15 minutes on Sky News? You've got them engaged right from the word go. So it can make a really big difference. Then the context. Now, this is kind of strange, but this is how you're going to frame and how you're going to set your talk up. And I think a good way to think about this is to think about yourself. What is most important to you? And the answer is probably you. Your brand, your company, what you're going to do, how you're going to do it. Then turn that around and think about what's most important to the audience. And that's right, them, their company, their brand, their role in things. So if you can reframe what you're going to talk about into your audience's setting, you will create much more engagement. So quite a nice way to do this can be future pacing. So let's say we're going to talk about a WebEx meeting. Now, you could start your talk by saying, right, OK, here are the steps that we're going to talk through to get to our WebEx meetings, step one, step two. That's very much about you. That's what you're going to do. If you flip it round and you start with the, the end day and you say, right, you know, imagine that you're sitting ready for the WebEx to start. There's an unprecedented thousand people joining the event live. You've got a fantastic speaker. He starts, the WebEx opens, and he says, today we're going to talk about you put them on the edge of their seats, ready to be captivated by what the story is. They are seeing their end goal. They're seeing their success and how this was delivered. And this is fundamentally the same story, the same content, but this is put in their context rather than yours. And it transforms how compelling the story that you tell is. And finally, not distracting from the message. So this is really avoiding the, the odd things that you might do with your hands. You know, big hand gestures, you know, we're being filmed today, so me moving around out of shot, this is very distracting. You know, it's getting hot in here, me touching my face, this is very distracting. So you need to eliminate those things. And the best way to do that is to film yourself. You know, you don't have to put it on Network Pharma TV. You don't have to show it to your mum. You just have to look at the video and see what you're doing. And what you're really looking for is cringe factor. So as you're going through your own content, the more you're cringing, the more you need to fix that bit. Um, and likewise, you know, I'm not saying don't be passionate. I'm not saying don't be animated. I'm just saying keep it simple, keep it close. Likewise, if you're sitting down, avoid crossed arms when you're talking. Avoid slouching, leaning back, all the simple things. Avoid reading from notes because you know, if I'm doing this, this is not compelling. I'm not engaging with you. In terms of your slides, your slides are not there to be a script. They're there to reinforce key points that you want to make. So you need to know your content well enough to almost be able to deliver your presentation without any notes, without reading from the slides. They're just there to drive home your message. So hopefully we've seen how, without thinking about the content, there are four key things you can do to really help set yourself up for success when you're talking, presenting, engaging, in conference calls, whatever it may be. How you can create a relaxed tone, start engaging people from the beginning. How you can make yourself relevant and set yourself up as credible on the topic you're going to talk about with your introduction. How you can frame things in the context of your audience to make it as compelling as possible, to get their attention right from the get-go. And finally, how you can just avoid doing some of the simple things that distract people while you're presenting. So uh, I hope you'll all go out there, give it a try, get presenting. And um, what you'll see is a lot more happy people at meetings, um, a lot more engagement, a lot more personal success and a lot more success for your companies. And people will just have more fun at your meetings. So go and have fun and thank you.